my brother and I, he's younger than me, Billy, and some of our friends, we looked for places to play. And I was 10 years old, he had been eight. And then one day we said, let's go over here eight mile road, west of Wyoming in this wooded area. And we um, come to this wall. We thought, man, what in the world is this? It had a very ominous, eerie feeling to it. Here in Detroit, uh, there was a developer that wanted to build a development for whites. And they wanted to get FHA loans. And the, the federal government said, you know what, there's a black community kind of close by. You don't get the good loans. Uh, and so the developer, in an effort to try to fix that, built a six foot tall wall, a, a foot deep, to separate the black community from the emerging white community. And then the federal government gave the loan. So on one side of the wall, you continue to have these rural, uh, underfunded, poorly maintained homes with people who didn't have much resources, while on the other side of the wall you have people who are moving into freshly painted homes with driveways and streets and new sewers. Folks who went in and, and, and signed on the dotted line and got those 30-year mortgages and looked at themselves with self-satisfaction and said, we just pulled ourselves up by the bootstraps, were in fact taking advantage of the FHA, providing them with resources and guaranteeing those funds the whole faith and credit of the U.S. government was behind that. That makes a huge difference in a person's life, which side of that wall you end up on. But it's a symbolic wall, and uh, it, it's an insultingly low wall in a certain way. Uh, the belief that that's all it took to separate the races and to maintain that separation. It is a very, very stark and ugly symbol of race discrimination, racial feelings, but also the dividing of resources uh, within our communities. The wall exists in many other communities, and it exists not necessarily the way the Burwood Wall does, but in other communities, the wall is a set of berms. There have been fences. There's often a railroad track. That's a common thing that we talk about. Which side of the tracks do you live on? I have seen Detroit go demographically from a city that, uh, as a young man, uh, we probably had about 20% African American to currently it is uh, probably closer to 85%. It's been, a, it's been hard to watch, uh, only because uh, you felt that the change uh, to, to a great extent resulted from people fleeing. As more African Americans moved in, the rate at which whites moved out was just um, very, very stark. And for the businesses to have followed the residents uh, means that um, opportunities that were there in the 1950s, 60s, maybe even 70s, they just uh, they don't exist anymore. And what has been left behind is a population that isn't just overwhelmingly black, but it's also overwhelmingly poor.